All right, so now we want to turn our attention to other indeterminate forms. Uh, specifically, uh, we're going to focus on these two now. Infinity times zero and infinity minus infinity. The other three indeterminate forms that I mentioned previously, uh, these three were all dealt with in a similar fashion. Okay, so we turn our attention now to these two middle ones. Okay, first two, we have our L'Hopital's rule, uh, which says again, if we have one of these, then we can differentiate the top and bottom to try to then evaluate the limit. Okay, these three will all be very similar. We'll talk about those a little bit. But first, we turn our attention to these two. Okay, of these two, the infinity minus infinity are typically the toughest ones. Uh, infinity times zero, we actually have a really straightforward way to manage, and that's the one we want to look at right now. And then later we'll turn to the infinity minus infinity. So anytime we have a limit that involves infinity times zero, like for example, uh, the limit as x approaches infinity, of x squared sine of 1 over x squared. Okay. This, of course, as x goes to infinity, x squared would go to infinity. As x goes to infinity, x squared would go to infinity. 1 divided by infinity would be 0. So this would be sine of 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Okay. So here we have a infinity times zero. So what we do with an infinity times zero situation is we transform it uh, by rewriting it so that it's either a zero divided by zero or infinity divided by infinity. And the way we do that is by taking one of my two pieces, and I can take either piece, it doesn't matter, one of my two pieces, and in writing it, Divide it by the reciprocal of the other piece. Okay. Because if I divide by the reciprocal, I would then take the reciprocal of that and get back to my answer. So I can take either piece, the x squared or the sine of 1 over x squared, and put that up on top. Uh, life is far simpler. If I put the sine up on top, so sine of 1 over x squared up top and say that's the same as that over the reciprocal of x squared. All right, so notice, of course, if you simplified something sine divided by that, you would say, oh, it's sine of 1 over x squared times the reciprocal of 1 over x squared, which would just be x squared, All right, and that would take me back Right to where I started. Okay, so that's the idea. Now we could do either one. Like I said, we could have done x squared over 1 over the sine squared stuff, but or the sine of that stuff, but that'd be a little rougher. That'd be a little rougher because then I got to deal with derivatives of the sine, uh, 1 over sine. In other words, derivatives of the cosecant. Uh, this is easier. This is just quite simply easier. Notice now that this limit, top is zero, the bottom is zero. We've transformed it into a zero over zero limit. If we had done it the other way, putting the x squared on top, and then one over sine of one over x squared on the bottom, then that would have been an infinity over infinity limit. And we could still apply the Lopetel's rule as well. So it still works. Okay. So this is a zero over zero limit now. So we differentiate across the top and across the bottom. Okay. So limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of sine, which would just be the cosine of that stuff, times the derivative of that stuff. Uh, so the derivative of that stuff 
would be the derivative of x to the negative second would be negative 2 x to the negative third. And that's all over the derivative of 1 over x squared. Again, the derivative of x to the negative second, which would be negative 2 x to the negative third. And so, of course, all that stuff cancels out. And we just have limit as x approaches infinity of cosine of 1 over x squared. As x goes to infinity, 1 over x squared goes to 0, cosine of 0 is 1. So our overall limit here is equal to 1.